guys, today's video is one that I have been really excited about um, and I've wanted to put together for a while now. I am going to be showing you how I get all of the really cool cells and lacing effects in my resin art. Um, I'm going to be showing you a couple different techniques and a couple different applications for these techniques. Um, so if you want to see how I get these really cool effects, please keep watching. Alright guys, before we jump into the fun stuff, um, there's just a few pieces of information that we should go over. Um, first and foremost, safety. Every brand of resin has a fact sheet that tells you whether or not it's toxic, whether or not the brand recommends a respirator, what protective equipment they recommend you use. Some just say gloves, some say full PPE. Um, I know there's a lot of conflicting information out there among artists and the resin groups I'm a part of on Instagram. Some people wear head-to-toe suits, they tape their gloves on, they have full face masks and they wear completely protective equipment because there is a thing called sensitization and when you use resin frequently and if you don't protect your body, you can have an allergic reaction to it and it can be very serious. So make sure that you're doing your research. Um, don't let anyone else tell you what's best for you and ultimately make sure that you're working in a ventilated area and that you're following all of the instructions put forth by the manufacturer. If you want to know more about what materials I use for mixing, um, safety, cleanup, all sorts of things like that, I will put a link right here to my holographic geode slash resin basics video. Um, I go into a lot of detail here about the materials I use, the plastic cups I use for mixing, the silicone mixing cups, um, my respirator and I talk about all the materials that I like to use. So that is a good recap. Um, I'm not going to go into it all again here, but make sure that you click on that video if you want to learn more. Um, lacing cells, whatever you want to call it, these details in resin art are one of the most sought after and exciting things that you can do in your work. Um, I know that everyone does them differently, which is part of why it's so much fun, um, and they turn out beautiful in any kind of artwork, whether you're doing beach scenes, geodes, just abstract work, any kind of resin art, it's one of the coolest things in my opinion, and I am so happy to be able to share my tips with you all. Um, I'm not a master in any sense of the word. I've just been playing around with this for about a year now and I think I've finally cracked it. So I'm going to be showing you video clips from three different paintings um, and each one has kind of a different application for how to get the effects, um, the effects that are generated and what I like to use that technique for. So if you want to learn how I get my cells, keep watching. First, we're going to start with beach art, um, and this is just my demonstration piece. It's a little crazy and chaotic, but there's a lot of things that I wanted to go over with you all, um, especially about layering and how to get these beautiful lacing effects and to give your painting a lot of depth. For this piece, I used my Counterculture DIY Artist Resin. I will link it in the description box below with all of the other materials, um, but you can get these effects in other brands as well. This is just my personal favorite to work with. For the background on this piece, I used um, two custom mixtures. I used a blue, which was the Mrs. Colorberry Blue Resin Paste, along with the Paint Huffer Metal Flake in the shade Blue Gasm. For the purple, I used the Mrs. Colorberry Pigment um, in Amethyst, along with the Paint Huffer in Purple Hair. For the gold at the bottom, the kind of like beach sand part of it, I used my Maron Gold um, Powdered Pigment. It's like a bronzy gold and it is used for cosmetics actually. Um, I just bought it on Amazon and I found that it's a really pretty metallic to use with my resin. For the white, um, this is probably the most important part of this whole video. I use the Mrs. Colorberry Crystal White Resin Paste. 
I have used um, casting craft, I've used the alcohol ink, I have used acrylic paint, I've used probably every additive that you can think of, and the resin paste is leaps and bounds above the rest in the results that I get. I know some people that very consistently get lacing and cells with the alcohol ink and with the casting craft, and um, I do like those as well. I, I have successfully gotten lacing with them, but I have not found it to be as consistent as the resin paste, um, and I just feel like these pastes, regardless of what brand you're using, just make everything so much easier, and um, it's just a case of sometimes the materials really do make a difference and paying that little bit of extra if you can um, makes the whole thing a lot easier in the long run the other materials will work as well and you can follow these same techniques but in my experience i just have preferred to use the resin paste to get my lacing so the last thing that you need in order to get cells and lacing is some sort of heat gun or torch my husband does not think that um, a torch is a good idea, so I strictly work with the heat gun. Um, I have two different brands. I have a Porter Cable one um, that works really well for popping the bubbles and applying heat um, very evenly. And then I have um, this one. It is a Wagner heat gun. Um, I got it at Walmart. It is um, a little less powerful, um, but for cells, that's really important. Um, you want to have a heat gun that has a low setting so that you can move around the resin without overpowering it or burning it. Um, so this is the one that I use. I will link it in the description box below. And um, that is everything you need to get started. So I'm just gonna jump right in here. Um, what I started was doing that purple and the blue mixture that I told you about. And I'm putting those over the majority of the canvas and just blending the two together um, with my hands. Um, make sure that you're wearing gloves for this step. That's really important. Um, but I'm just blending those two colors because that bluish purple like indigo color is going to be the background for this entire panel. And um, you really wanna just make sure that it's even and that that whole area is coated. From there, I'm gonna put a little bit of that gold at the bottom to represent the beach um, for this painting. And then once that's on there, I'm gonna leave a little strip in between that gold and that blue where I'm going to fill it with clear resin. So um, this is just the base layer and I'll go into a lot more detail in the next few layers. Um, but what I did here is I do that clear resin and then I go ahead and pour my white resin right on top of that clear. So you can see me doing that right now. Um, I'm just dripping it where that gold is and then it kind of is like bleeding into where that clear is. The reason that I'm doing this is because I'm going to take my heat gun and blow that white into that clear and that's where the cells are going to develop. So you'll notice um, this, this video isn't as great quality as the next few. I'm sorry about that, um, but luckily the others are a little bit better. Um, but you'll see that I am holding my heat gun at kind of like a 45 degree angle to push that resin out into where that blue is. And then once it starts to spread, I'm hitting it straight on with the heat so that all of those cells kind of expand and develop some more. Um, and I'm even pushing a little bit of that gold into the white into that clear so that all of those colors are kind of blending a little bit. Um, this is the first layer and the cells aren't as pronounced as they'll be in the next few steps that I'm going to explain, um, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick background of how I did the first layer um, before I go into a lot of detail about how to get the cells to develop with this technique. Um, you will also notice I tilted this a little bit to get that white to kind of blend out down the canvas. Tilting is definitely a really useful step um, if you're noticing that the lacing isn't going in the direction you want or if you just want to spread it out. Um, it kind of helped me spread that from like a, a two inch section to that much larger area. So I let that cure overnight and now I am about to pour my second layer. So I've slowed this one, this is like regular speed, um, just so I can show you guys exactly what I'm doing here and go into a lot of detail. Um, I'm starting by coating the panel with clear and um, I'm only doing the top half. Um, I poured like a little bit of a lip at the bottom where I want the cells and lacing to stop. I'm going to do at the very end a final flood coat that covers the whole thing and makes it all the same level. Um, but this helps so that your cells do not go past where you want them to stop. I found this to be a very useful tip. Um, and this way you can kind of control where everything goes so it doesn't have a mind of its own. 
Okay, so you want to pop all of the bubbles in your clear layer before you even start with your cells. This way you don't have to mess up your cell formations if there are bubbles in the resin. So you can see that now I'm going in with my white resin, and this is with that resin paste mixed in, and I'm just drizzling a line across where I want those cells to go. Don't use too much. Um, start small with the amount of white. You can always add more, but you can't take it away. What I'm doing here is I am keeping my heat gun about an inch or so away from the panel, and I'm starting it at about a 45 degree angle. Um, the tip of the heat gun should either be facing where you want the cells to go or kind of facing away but still pushing towards that direction. So whether you have the tip of the gun pointed at that white or pointed away from it, you still want to move the heat gun in that same direction because as you slide the heat gun, you know, from one side to the other, it pushes the lacing and the cells to develop in that direction. So I like to keep it at that 45 degree angle as the cells start to develop and move. And then I'll hit it straight on um, with my heat gun vertical up and down to spread out and develop those cells further after I've gotten them to go in the direction that I want them to go in. So the benefit of doing an entire layer of just clear and then dripping the white in it to get those cells is that the white isn't competing with anything and it can expand and develop without being impeded by any other colors with different densities. Okay, so I let that cure again overnight, um, and now I'm going in and doing another layer of just clear with that white in it. So I sped this part up just because you've seen it a few times, um, but I'm just coating the canvas with that white. Um, I left a little bit of a lip at the bottom just so that nothing will go past that point, and then I'm going to use the heat gun to pop the bubbles and then get started with my white. So this is going to be kind of the same technique as the last layer. Um, I'm drizzling that white just before where that lip is, um, and I'm going to do the same thing by holding my heat gun at that angle. Um, and real quick, I'm just popping some more bubbles, but then I'm going to start blowing that white so that it overlaps where the lacing from the very first layer is, and that's going to create some really cool depth effects. Um, something really cool about doing lacing in layers is that you can build upon what you've done before. So I can go in and add more white on top of the cells from the first time that were a little less developed. Um, and this way, as you look through, that clear is going to allow you to see through to the prior layers, but that white's going to kind of block out certain sections. And it's going to look like real lacing in an ocean. So for this part, I'm going to show you kind of the different motions of the heat gun, and hopefully you can see it a little better than earlier. Um, I'm hitting it at different angles, and you can see that the cells are developing in slightly different ways. So the more you practice with this, the more you'll get comfortable with it um, if you, you know, hit it at that angle or if you hit it with the heat going totally straight on, you know, or if the nozzle of the heat gun is pointed at the white versus away from the white. All of these different angles and maneuvers kind of result in different types of cells and the way that they develop. So you really want to practice um, maybe before you start on a big piece, do a small piece and just experiment in a couple different layers like I'm doing here to see how that works. I also want to show you what happens if you add too much white um, and it gets oversaturated. It turns into kind of what I like to call a jellyfish. So you can see here that there's so much white that I just added into that corner that it's not blending out into the clear as easily as it was before. So it's kind of turned into a little bit of a blob, and I'm going to show you what happens when you get too close to the panel with your heat gun or if you heat it for too long. So there are some cells developing, you can see as much there, but it's starting to burn. So when the resin burns, you can see that only a little bit of the resin is moving in that corner. The rest of it has been heated too much, and so it's kind of gotten plasticky and it will not move. I'm going to add just a little bit of clear on top there to show you um, how everything works once you get to that point. So you can see I'm trying to heat what I just poured over top of it to see if it'll allow those cells to blend out anymore. And around the bottom and the edges, it did work out and it feathered a little bit. But you can see me kind of fanning the canvas here where it did overheat and start to um, smoke a little bit. 
So it's a little bit better looking than it was when I first started. Um, it's kind of taken on what I call that jellyfish effect. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side just to show you again why you should only use a little bit of white at a time until you get comfortable. Um, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. And this effect isn't bad. I kind of like it for different things, um, but for what I was going for, it wasn't matching the rest of the lacing. So you just want to be careful that you don't overdo it um, with adding your pigment in the clear, and you want to make sure that there's room for it to move so that it doesn't take over your other elements that you've put in the work as well. So I am doing a little bit tilting here just to show you that the cells do spread out and move. Um, those sections where I burned it a little bit to show you that they're not moving, but the rest of the cells are. So this is what it looks like after it cured. And you can see there's a lot of lacing going on. I'm going to show you some close-ups to see some of that really cool depth in the overlay, um, how the different layers interact with each other. So this is that section where the resin burned a little bit. You can see there are some bubbles, and if I was to use this piece for anything, I would definitely do another coat um, to kind of even so that So I definitely out. wouldn't say that this piece is finished, um, but I do love how the cells turned out, and I think it's a really good example of what white in that clear can accomplish. So this is number two. Um, I used the same technique from the first layer in the last painting where I had um, I did my background and then I did my beach at the bottom. Um, this is the Fool's Gold by KS Resin mixed with the gold from Stardust Micas. Um, and then I used Mrs. Colorberry Resin Paste at the top. I used the same blue as before, but then I used the green Malachite instead of the Amethyst. And I used the Mary Jane Metal Flake. Um, for this piece, instead of leaving a whole section clear and then pushing the clear into the other colors, what I did was I poured um, all three of the background colors and then I dripped just a tiny bit of clear and then the white in the clear on top. So when I hit it with the heat gun, the cells spread out and it would kind of interact with the other colors around it instead of just being the white on top of the I used the same techniques with the heat gun for this one. Um, I did a lot of the same 45 degree angle, but in this video you can see that I did instead of just, so if this is the white, you can hit it from the front at this angle, or you can hit it from this angle and move your heat gun across it. So I figured it's easier just to kind of show you instead of kind of trying to demonstrate without any artwork in my hands. Um, but this part is sped up just because you don't need to see me coating the whole panel over and over again in real time. Um, so until I get the white on the panel, I'm just going to be going a little fast here. I am using that blue and that green mixture and blending them together over most of the canvas and then using that gold at the bottom to be the beach area. And then what I'm going to do is just drip some clear on top of where those colors kind of come together and then pour my white into that clear. So I'm using the same steps from the first um, piece that I showed you, but building upon it by mixing those other colors in as well so it's not just the white in the clear. Um, so now I'm going to go back to regular speed here for you, and I'm just going to show you what happens when you m blend with the heat gun, um, that white, clear, and then those other colors on the panel. So instead of just being white cells, you're going to get some areas that are that beautiful white lacing, um, but some other areas where the blue and the green kind of mix together with that white um, I guess mix isn't the right word, but they kind of like outline it almost. And so your cells are going to be multicolor and really, really beautiful. Um, this isn't necessarily like a cell tip, but notice how I am wrapping the handle of the heat gun in a paper towel. This is just a general resin tip. You do not want to get resin all over your heat gun. If you get it in that switch, you won't be able to turn your heat gun on anymore. And um, it just really sucks. So make sure that you're wiping down the handle. Make sure that you don't leave any resin on there to cure because it can really cause some problems down the line. 
So I follow a few artists um, who have a bit more of a science background than I have over on Instagram. And um, I've seen a couple people explain that the reason for getting these cells is that the pigments have different densities. And so as they layer in the resin, the effects kind of happen based on the different um, pigments that you are layering. So I find that really interesting. Um, and you can see that the green and the white are kind of interacting a little bit more than the white with the blue or the gold. Um, I'm not a science person, so I don't know exactly why that happens. Um, but the more you experiment with your different colors, your different materials, um, whether you're using resin paste, powdered pigments, um, acrylic paint, you'll kind of see how the different materials interact with each other. And once you kind of get a good grip on that, um, you'll have more success in getting the resin to do what you want it to do. So um, something that I think bears repeating is just that practice makes perfect. And the more you work with these techniques, the more you work with these materials, the better you will get at controlling the outcome. Um, I know that fluid art is really just like an unpredictable medium, but sometimes you can get repeated results. And the more you practice, the better you'll get at doing so mentioned this in the first part, um, but you can tilt the piece to kind of manipulate your cells. And if you feel like you want more and you want to add more white, go for it. Um, if you feel like the white is not spreading out as much as it should, you can add a little bit more clear over top of it um, so that it gives it something to kind of spread into and thickens up that area a little bit. So you can see here, I just wanted a little bit more cell action over on the left side of the panel. So I added a little bit more of both of those mixtures. And you know, you have to let your cells sit for a little while. Um, you can give it 30 seconds to a minute and see if they're developing the way you like. And if not, you can go back in with your heat gun and apply more heat. You can tilt it, you can manipulate those cells to get them to do what you want. Um, but it does help to let it sit for a minute. So um, I let it cure overnight, and here are some images of what it ended up looking like after this painting dried. So I want to show you some close-ups so you can see how um, that white did interact with the other colors um, differently than it did when it was just white in clear. I mentioned before, um, it seemed to interact with the green a little bit more than it did with the other colors, um, but it did have some really, really cool effects. This part almost looks like it's even glowing in the dark, so this technique would be really cool for those of you who do like the galaxy art. So once you kind of master these techniques, there is a lot that you can do with them, and I just wanted to show you a couple other pieces that I use these techniques for. Um, to give you an idea of some of the really cool projects that you can make. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this one um, because I do have a full time lapse of it, but it does a really good job of combining the first and second techniques I showed you. So I will link this video um, if you want to check that one out. You can see how to get that really, really cool extra depth um, by doing those different layers. So this is a ring dish. Um, it's an ashtray that I found at the um, thrift store local. Um, my husband and I went and we bought a whole bunch of crystal dishes because they have some really beautiful ones that you can clean up and repurpose into some really cool things. Um, the cells and lacing in this turn out amazing. So there's a two layers in this one. Um, the first layer is actually the second technique where I used the multiple colors with the white in the colors. Um, and it turned out pretty, it was just a little bit subtle, so I did another layer where it was just clear with the white pigment. Um, I'm really glad I did because it has that beautiful like infinity shape, and you can see how doing these techniques together can create some really beautiful depth and give your piece a lot of dimension. This one is similar, um, it's like a, a candle tray, um, it's really pretty, and it had this lip that would stop the resin from spilling over, so it was really, really fun to work on. Um, this one I did in three layers. It's a similar story to the last piece. Um, there's the sparkly background and then I did two layers of the um, lacing. So the, the middle layer was just white 
Um, and then I did a mixture of the purple and white on top and you can see how the colors blended together and created some really pretty lacing and then the depth that it created by doing it in layers. So this one definitely combines um, both techniques that I showed you, doing just the clear lacing and then doing a little bit of the lacing with the other colors. And it's really cool to see how the techniques can come together to create some really cool effects. So these two are more ring dishes um, and they are just blue and white with some really pretty cells in there. Um, this one I just did a blue background and then I did the clear with the white on top and um, it turned out really really pretty and I like how those cells developed. This one um, I did a couple layers. You can see there's some really subtle lacing on top here. Um, what I did, I did a blue sparkly base and white at the top and then I did a clear layer on top with more of that lacing. So you can see that once you get these techniques down, you can mix and match them. And if you do a bunch of different layers with the different techniques, you can create some really pretty depth effects and you can get some really, really cool results um, in the lacing and even just the colors in general. So this one, you can see that there's, there's so much going on just in that little spot, but it's because of combining these different techniques. All right, last but not least, I will be showing you this painting um, and how I got these really beautiful cell effects and how the resin pastes interact with each other. For this, I used the Amethyst and Crystal White by Mrs. Colorberry and the Fool's Gold by KS Resin. I did use the KS Resin brand resin for this as well instead of my counterculture DIY, and I was really pleased with it. Um, they were kind enough to send me a sample to try out along with the Fool's Gold, um, so I really liked working with it and I will definitely have to get some more in the future. So for this piece what I did was I layered the um, three colors that I used in stripes across the whole painting and then I used my heat gun and I swiped and I did a couple different techniques to get all these effects. Um, when the, the pigment pastes are next to each other they tend to kind of start to develop um, but the heat gun really brings everything out. So I started this piece by just kind of pouring all three colors in stripes until the whole panel was coated. Um, and I limited this to three colors because the darker resin pastes can tend to overtake everything if you're not careful. Um, so I used the white because it's light um, and it gives the best cells out of any pigment paste in my experience. Um, and I used the purple because it's gorgeous. I love the purple and I wanted something bold and beautiful. And then I used the Fool's Gold um, just because it's soft but gives a metallic aspect to it. Um, so I chose these three colors because I thought they would work well together without overwhelming each other. Um, and you can see here that even just with the first pass of the heat gun, it's starting to develop those cells and the colors are starting to interact with each other. So um, periodically I'm going to go back through and just add some more color because um, there were some spaces that I missed the first time I did it. Um, but right there I just did a quick little swipe and then you can see once I hit it with the heat gun, the cells kind of really, really pop out. Um, so when you do a piece like this, you can experiment with all sorts of different techniques. Um, you can even just put the colors next to each other and heat them and see what happens. Um, or you can kind of layer them a little bit so that when you apply the heat, um, they sink or rise in the resin depending on their own densities of those pigments. Um, and then they will blend together and create those really pretty effects. Um, so when I did this, I was a little worried that the gold wasn't going to hold its own against the other brand, um, just because sometimes when colors are formulated in the same company, they have the same, um, you know, formula and they work really well together, but when they're put with other things, it doesn't necessarily work out. But in this case, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, the gold was subtle, but it did a really nice job of adding that extra, you know, metallic, vibrant pizzazz element to the painting. I know with this one I'm not giving as clear of instructions um, just because it was an experiment. So if you're going to do a piece like this, you can use your heat gun in the same ways that I showed you in the last two techniques. You can swipe, you can add colors over top of other colors even once you've added the heat just to see what kind of happens with it. A lot of it is just an experiment until you get familiar with how your colors interact. 
Um, and using resin paste, I have found, is one of the most straightforward ways to get these beautiful cells and effects. No matter how you apply the heat, it seems like you will get some of these effects. So my advice is just to go for it, and um, practice makes perfect. This is after the piece has cured overnight. Um, you can see those really beautiful details. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of cells in this piece. So there's really subtle ones. There's the more dramatic ones. Um, there are my favorite parts where that gold has kind of outlined the other colors. Um, and then there are some places where the purple does that in the gold or in the white. So working with resin pastes, honestly, it's probably the most foolproof way to get cells um, in my experience. Personally, I love working with pigment powders. I love working with acrylic paint. I will use anything in resin, but if the cells are what you are trying to get, use these materials. So here's another example. This layer of this piece, this last one with all these cells, was entirely done with resin paste. Resin paste is formulated for resin. It's as easy as that. If you want to get the desired effects in resin, using the materials that are made for it is the easiest way to get them. Alright guys, just a quick recap of um, all of the lots of information that I went over. Um, first and foremost, your materials make a difference in the kind of results that you're going to get. So I personally like to use resin paste to get cells. Um, other artists I know have found success with the Casting Craft white pigment and with alcohol ink. Um, I enjoy working with those as well, but the resin paste has become my number one go-to when I want to do the white lacing effect. For your heat gun, you want to pick something that has a low setting and you want to start by keeping it further away from your canvas. You can always get closer, um, but you don't want to risk burning your resin. The angle of the heat gun or the torch or whatever um, heat source you add to your painting can make a difference in the way the cells develop. Um, I personally like to use it at a 45 degree angle, whether it is towards the resin or away from the resin. Um, and then once I get it kind of to the area that I want it to be, I will hit it straight on with my heat gun and then the cells will start to spread out. But first you want to have it move in the direction you want it to go in and then you can focus on getting them to expand and to develop. Then using your pigment pastes um, without the clear, you want to make sure that you limit the amount of colors you use and you want to kind of balance as to whether you have a really strong color and then some more subtle colors. Um, otherwise, your painting can get a little muddy and you don't want it to turn into a giant mess. I've had that happen multiple times um, just because I've gotten a little too excited. So you want to start small and learn how the pigments work with each other and then you can continue to add in more. Um, it's easier to gain familiarity with the materials and then build upon what you learn rather than just throwing 10 different colors on one panel, hitting it with the heat gun and hoping for the best. You can add a lot of depth to your painting by doing layers. And personally, I think that one of the coolest effects you can do is to do three or four layers and have translucent colors as well as clear so that you can see through to the first one. Um, it's great to do multiple layers with just that white and do that lacing, but I think if you throw in a little bit of your other colors to add some dimension, it adds some really, really beautiful effects to your painting, and it can make a huge difference between it looking flat and looking like it has a lot of depth, like an ocean. Alright guys, that's all I have for you. Um, thank you for watching. If you make anything using the techniques that you've learned from this video, please tag me over on Instagram at Samantha's Doodles. Um, I am on Facebook under the same name as well. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see what kind of crazy stuff I have for you coming soon, subscribe to my channel to be notified when those videos go live. Thanks guys.